think everybody is looking for a little bit of hope in the face of this climate and biodiversity crisis that we're facing. And that's what these bison are doing. I mean, they're just a little pebble of hope in a, in a pond and, and we can do so much more. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed by the negative stories that you see every day on the news um, and think, well, what on earth can I do to help? But actually, everybody can play a part. We're at a point now where people are more engaged, they're more understanding, more receptive to the fact that we're in a climate crisis, we're in a, a cost of living crisis, and I, I take it as a responsibility to ensure that wildlife is accessible to everyone. I want to live in a world where my children grow up and see the same things that I got to see, and more. There's no one else doing things quite the way that we do it, and really there's sort of three sides to what we do. We have our animal parks with our animals that are our breeding centres for our animal projects and our reintroductions and rewilding projects, so we're hands-on people working directly with the animals. But we also have a massive education arm, educating you know, thousands of people, tens of thousands of school kids over the years to understand nature, to love nature and to want to help nature, but also why it's so important to do the sort of work that we do. Interview five, take one. <laughs> um, first question, what have you got in your hand? What have I got in my hand? I have got a bear skull in my hand. It's not a real one, it's a replica one, but it is exactly the same size as a brown bear. So we have thousands of kids that come through our doors uh, between the Kent and Devon parks. Um, they come and visit us for a variety of, of reasons, whether they're nursery school children coming to do our bear hunt workshop, or maybe they are coming to do um, A-level ecology with us as well, or maybe they're a group of scouts or rainbows or older people and they're coming to have a conservation tour. We really cater for, for everybody because it's important that everybody is able to get that educational message. You can really see in their faces how much they enjoy learning about the animals, about the conservation that we do here. A lot of them go away saying it's the best day they've ever had. So um, I think when children can actually see animals close up, it forges that connection with them um, and it makes them a lot more likely to want to protect them and help them in the future. We see so many young people coming into our park. Um, and they're so much more knowledgeable than I was at their age and probably am now to be fair um, but they're passionate and dedicated and you just think that is what keeps you going. If people spend time in nature and they see the benefits of nature they they will people will realize the value that's in it and and it, it'll it'll spark a bonfire it'll be Oh, it, it, we, we can solve this problem today and th there's so much passion and enthusiasm out there and uh, it's just, yeah, we, 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 need, we need more people out in nature. Did a bear do that to you? Uh, so a bear didn't do this, no. Uh, I just had a bit of a nasty fall. Uh, yeah, so we, we're actually coming up to uh, 10 years of Wildwood having bears. So uh, Fluff and Scruff, our original two, first arrived on November the 5th in 2014. So this is a, actually it's a massive deal for us. Um, they spent 16 years in a square concrete pit. So for them to make it to 10 years here is absolutely brilliant. Um, so we've done, we, we've done a lot in that time. I mean, we've gone from a collection that was completely new to this species. And now we actually get people contact us, you know, looking just for, for help in the, the areas that we're quite successful in. Um, so we've done, we've done, we've just done an awful lot of work with uh, rescue bears. And we have two on site here that were rescued from pits. We have one who was unfortunately rejected out of his own family grouping. And we have two bears at another site um, down in Devon. And they were both found in a snow drift after being abandoned by their mum. So we're, we're actually in what you consider is a really short space of time we've almost gone to, you know, sort of expert level in, in some of these situations that we're dealing with. 
Yes, yeah, so the wild cat project update, um, we've had a booming year for kittens. We had 11 in total. Um, we had some off show facilities specifically designed for wild cat breeding and these were to test out for our future project um, for Wales. Um, so our project is looking at releasing wild cats back into the Welsh countryside. But it's important first that we know that we can breed them, that we can alter anything here first. Um, to make sure that we are ready for those releases. So this year has been just so successful. We sent some of our white stalk chicks for release at NEP um, and one of them had a GPS uh, tracker on it. So being able to track that bird on its migration, obviously it was hatched here with the parents and then um, sent out to, to NEP where it was released uh, with its siblings and I think about 30, 35 other birds. Um, they then take their first migration together, so they usually go down to southern Spain or northern Africa, um, and we could see sort of where our bird was going, um, and it actually passed over Wildwood a couple of times. We didn't see them, but you could see on the map that they'd, they'd flown over, and, and to me that was really special, knowing that those chicks were, were able to be part of a release program. And then the third arm of what we do is, is we're really trying to change how things are done. So we're talking at the highest political levels with our regulators and people like that as to how we need to change things to help nature recover, to save nature. We're in a biodiversity crisis and all three of those things that we do are all pushing to help save nature in this country. You know, we're wild with trust. We want to save nature. We want those wild spaces where you can go for a walk and wild mammals that have been destroyed and taken out of our you know, taken out of our world for hundreds of years are back. Functioning ecosystems, explosions of biodiversity, you know, healthy lungs for the planet. You know, that's, that's what we need, that's what we want. I think the biggest change society needs to make to ensure the survival of endangered species is really a mindset shift. For so long, we've been approaching conservation through these traditional methods, but they clearly haven't worked. One in six native species are threatened with extinction. What we've been doing isn't the approach that's going to work. So shifting towards this rewilding approach, shifting towards allowing nature to lead, I think is going to be the biggest impact that we can see for helping our conservation projects. Our focus and our energy towards conservation is the top that it can be. The nice thing about us is we don't always just look at the big stuff, we look at the small stuff too, and we're enabling ourselves to diversify, hence why I'm here, to look at those different species and, and look at conservation in a different perspective. Sometimes it's the species that we forget about that need the most help. Invertebrates are facing a massive crisis in the whole of the UK, and if we can look at our efforts towards some of those lesser, sort of more forgotten species, we can make a difference across the, across the country not just for the big bison, not just for the, the pretty wildcats, we can help absolutely everything else in between. Everybody that, that visits Wildwood just gets a little flavour of what is so exciting about British wildlife. Some of the species that historically they might have just seen going for a walk in their local park or in their garden becoming increasingly rare. And so they get to see these animals, find out a little bit about the ecology, find out about species that were here and are no longer here, and species which are currently quite common, but also we've got climate change threatening many of the, the sort of species and things are going to change. So just, just having those conversations, getting people engaged and just sort of understanding that, that we're, we're part of nature, you know, and we have the capacity to be guardians for the future. We've got projects that we're working on that aren't externally funded, that we're funding internally, and they're moving along at a snail's pace because of a lack of funding. If we were to have a significant funder come forward for those projects, like our Welsh Wildcat project, it would unlock it immediately and we'd be looking at releases in two years' time. Without that, we're, we're struggling around. We're trying to find a donor, we're trying to find a grant. And all the time we're doing that, the project is sort of inching forward slowly because we don't want to breed too many cats till we know we've got the funds to make it really happen. You know, the Chuff project runs out of funds next year. We need someone to fund the Chuff project for the next three or four years. So many of our projects are dependent on short-term funding because that's the nature of the grants. 
but to have major funds available for us to do this stuff just because we've got the money to do it, it would take the shackles off and we could do some huge things really quickly. We've got amazing projects up our sleeves that we'd love to do if we could just afford to do them. One of the big things that I'd love to think we could do is get more land, acquire land in which we can look at what species could we release. I'd love to have a huge enclosed forest with red squirrels in it, white storks nesting at the top of it. Could you imagine that? Who's going to do it better than we are? Nobody. This is what we do. It's our bread and butter. We share the passion that other people share and we can make it work. Water voles in streams, red squirrels on your doorstep, white storks nesting above you. That's where we're heading.